Hey everybody, welcome to this session on short sales. Short sales is one of those uh, terms that you've heard banded around the marketplace, especially in today's marketplace. And there's a lot of myths that surround short sales. There's a lot of positive things. There's some negative things as well. And I figured why not just peel back the curtain and allow you to see really what the truth is about short, short sales so you can make the decision of how you want to pursue them. I've got on the phone with me, actually my business partner, who's also a very dear friend of mine, uh, Darius. How you doing, Darius? I'm doing great, Bob. Doing great. Happy to be here and happy to get into detail about short sales. Well, I know that you love short sales. You know, you and I have done a lot of recordings and, and certain things I'm really passionate about. But I got to tell you, short sales are your passion. And I'm really excited because I love to hear you talk about something that you just really just excites you. So why don't we just jump right into it? Tell everybody what a short sale is and some of the pros and cons that are associated with it. Sure. Well, short sales, really, when I first got involved in real estate, they were my bread and butter. They were the only thing I did over the course of three years. I did them in New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, Florida, um, various other parts of the country. So it really was my only strategy for a long time. The thing with short sales is they have drastically changed, and we'll go through some of those changes now, but let's first explain what a short sale actually is. A short sale is what happens when a property passes through the initial default period, which basically the initial default period is when a person starts to fall behind on their loan. One month, two months, three months, every single bank in every single state operates a little bit differently of when they actually start the short sale process, but that's what happens after the initial default stage, and the bank will basically serve the homeowner with a notice of default or a Liz Pendens. Liz Pendens is Latin for hanging lawsuit or pending litigation. Basically what that means is the bank says enough is enough. You haven't been paying me, and because you haven't been paying me, I'm taking back the collateral. I'm taking back the property, and I will go through either the court system or some type of system out there um, that is moderated by some authoritative figure or authoritative figure so, or authoritative department. So what will happen in that situation is the homeowners now will be served papers, and the bank will start the proceedings to take the property back. Now, there's judicial versus non-judicial, which we won't really get into the detail, but that basically means does that process happen through the court system or does it happen from a trustee or a certain advisory board that will oversee the process of getting it back. A short sell is basically the bank taking the property back in that process. The biggest thing is it's the pre-foreclosure stage. It's basically when the property um, is in the process of being foreclosed on, yet the homeowners still own the property, and the biggest benefit is an investor can come in, work with that motivated seller, get that property below market value. The only thing is the seller is not the only person that has to say yes. It's really up to the bank to be able to approve that short sale and get what we call a short sale approval. So great way to get a property below market value. So let me just make sure I understand this, Darius. So you've got a, a, a homeowner who's behind in their payments. They want to sell the property. They want to get out from underneath it. And oftentimes what happens is they owe more than what the property's worth. Yeah, in many cases, we'll see that. They will actually, they'll have a property. They, they kind of got into the property. They didn't leverage themselves the right way. Um, they, they got a mortgage extremely high. Their LTV loan to value was very high, meaning if the property was worth 100000 they got 107% financing, which basically paid for the whole property and their closing costs. And the sure. property didn't appreciate. In fact, it depreciated. And now they owe more on the property than what the property is worth. So they can't sell it through traditional means. So now what we're doing is we're asking the bank to say, hey, look, allow this guy to sell the property. And by the way, even though he owes you $107,000, um, he can only sell the property for eighty. So we're asking you, the bank, to take less than what's owed to you. Exactly, and that's what a short sale is. The bank is shorting the amount owed to them through the process of a sale to be able to move the inventory, settle the debt, 
and move on. And the homeowners can obviously move on from the bad situation. They don't get to keep the property at all. Um, they may have to pay the difference that the bank um, obviously discounted. They might have to, depends on certain situations. But bottom line, it's a way of being able to avoid a foreclosure and an investor can benefit. A homeowner can benefit and at least lessen the blow of losing the property. The bank can benefit from not having to expend costs, time, and energy to actually get the money that they're never going to get. So it's kind of a win-win for everyone involved. Awesome. Now, you know, I think uh, so. You, everybody's winning. You've got the seller who gets, gets out from underneath the payment. Of course, he doesn't get a dime, but that's okay. The bank doesn't have to go through the foreclosure process. They're going to take less than what's owed, but they're going to do it anyway because the property is devalued. And the investor uh, gets a good deal on a property uh, because they're buying it, in many cases, for less than market value. Aren't there sure. some things to consider, though? I mean, haven't states... Uh, not only states, but different banks put regulations on short sales that people need to watch out for? Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, some of the great things about the short sales, you can get it below market value. But the biggest negative about it is there are a lot of restrictions to you getting it below market value. You know, some banks out there will say, we'll give you the property below market value. However, we don't really want you to make a profit off of our loss. So as a way of being able to deter an investor from making that profit, they'll want you to hold on to the property for an extended time period. Could be 30 days, could be 60, could be 90. So you have to buy the property and remain on title for 30 to 90 days before you can resell it for a profit. The exception to the rule is if you buy the property and you add substantial a value to the property basically through forced appreciation or what I'm getting to is rehabbing the property. That's mm -hmm. one of the ways that you can kind of get around that. Or the big way to get around it is if the bank actually approves you being able to sell the property the moment that you buy it. There's some crafty things that we do as well too that are perfectly legal, but some <laughs> loopholes that let me let me clarify that perfectly legal, <laughs> and we won't get into detail about that now. But some real slick ways that we can actually get around that and be able to move that property sooner. So um, those are some of the pros and cons and the <laughs> some of it's, the restrictions that are it's out some there. Some restrictions, and I know some of the states have even put in restrictions as far as you know if if somebody's in a pre foreclosure situation that they've got to have a third party who's the mediator come in and negotiate this, et cetera, et cetera. And folks, what we're saying here is, you know, short sales are really viable in today's market. You just, the game has changed. You've got to be a student of the game and you've got to see exactly how, you know, what you can and cannot do and adjust your buying strategies uh, appropriately. That said, obviously there's a, a wrong way to do it and there's a right way to do it. And you and I have been talking a little bit about the right way to do short sales. Sure, sure. I mean, a few things to consider. There's a lot of stuff to take into account, but some of the most important things that I'll speak about now is one of my biggest mistakes I made when I started doing short sales a long time ago was I would take any deal that came across my, my desk. And, you know, I luckily I had a massive team. I had 50 people that worked for me in my firm, so we could just turn and burn through the negotiation process. Things have changed now. We're very selective of what we actually work on. And the big thing is it all stems from marketing, having proper marketing so that you have enough leads coming across your desk so you can cherry pick, pick and choose the specific deals that fit your criteria to have the easiest banks to work with, the largest potential profit spread, the highest likelihood of being sold quickly, and really carry the lowest amount of risk for you, the client and everyone involved. So a big thing is having a certain marketing mechanism in place so you have enough leads coming in. The next thing happens to be the package. And this is one of the biggest reasons why short sales get held up. And that's kind of one of the biggest cons I didn't mention before is there's nothing short about a short sale. It can take two months. It can take six months. We've had some deals that have taken us 18 months to do. So oh, sure, absolutely. Again, Volume, that's why volume is so important. But the package, having a comprehensive package put together. You know, we hired some people that used to be loss mitigators at banks to work for us. And when we first interviewed them, the biggest thing they said or the biggest reason they said that created a delay in them being able to issue an approval is lack of a complete package. So that's one of the biggest things people have to figure out. And they have to learn what actually goes into the package. Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, basically, do you have to prove with your package, you have to prove to the bank. It's like getting a loan in reverse. 
you know, you were, you were, people got the loan. The loan officer had to prove that the folks were worthy of the loan. And now with the package, you have to prove that the homeowner is worthy of a discount on the loan. So it's like exactly. putting the load in reverse, and there's a package there, and I've talked with loss mitigators who are pulling their hair out because of incomplete packages. I completely see that you know, all the way around. You know, and I think finally I think it would be really important to, to really get a handle because there's so many moving parts to get a handle on the exit strategy you know, with the timing and everything because you've got a, a buyer, you've got a bank is getting a discount, someone's got to issue a, a short sale letter after reviewing things, and I mean the list goes on. Have, have, how did you find that? Yeah, I think that's one of the most important things is being able to time things properly. You know, when you get an approval, it's time sensitive. They'll give you 30 days to close the deal. You might be able to get extended one or two times depending on how good you are and how you can relate to the bank and the relationship that you have. But you really need to be able to line up all these pieces together and obviously pull the transaction together. That's why you make the money that you make. So learning how to time things is really important and learning your exit strategy, knowing that just because I'm getting a deep discount on this deal and because it looks great doesn't necessarily mean that I should move ahead with it because if it's not a transaction that you can get at a deep enough discount, even though you might be able to get that approval quickly and without too much stress or aggravation, the issue is if you can't sell the property or if you don't plan to retain the property yourself and add it to your portfolio, you're wasting your time. So you really need to understand your exit strategy and know that exit strategy before you get involved. Speaking of, we actually have put together a program that really goes through exit strategies and we're going to give it to you 100% for free. Bob, myself and our other partners created something that we call REAP which stands for Real Estate Action Plan. All you have to do is put your information in on the right side of the screen or way down below and you'll get access for it. Now what this is, it's actually a 30-day action plan that takes into account what we have been doing over the last few years for a long, long time to build successful businesses in different markets in the country using many different strategies. Basically, every day you're going to get an email, or rather every other day you're going to get an email that gives you information about marketing, doing analysis on transactions, how to actually find deals, how to work with cash buyers, how to work with investors. We get into strategies like private money, how to raise capital, how to be able to do work with IRA and retirement accounts, wholesale, short sale, rehabbing, REOs, bank own, and the list goes on and on. This is basically an action plan that gives you specific things to do every other day over the course of 30 days to duplicate our successful businesses that we've had for years. Additionally, the market has changed. It's not what it was a year ago. It wasn't what it was even a month ago. It's drastically changed. And one big thing that Bob and myself do is we focus on digging out niches that the competition has not even heard about yet. That's why we put together a video, which you'll get immediately after you put your information in, that goes through what we call the four opportunities in the market or the four pillars to success. Just put your information in, you'll get access to that video right away, and you'll get the REAP program, again, completely for free. The reason why we're doing this is you came to our site, you got information, we want to see you have a successful business, and we want to be able to do something with you in the future. So thank you so much for being part of this training. Thank you, Bob, and we look forward to seeing you on the next training. Cool. Yippee! <laughs> oh, done. Done. <laughs> and Charlie Sheen even made his way in there. <laughs> Charlie Sheen even made it. <laughs> under, oh, re man. under rehab. <laughs> under rehab. There you go. That, now, now that's misdirection for you. Buddy, I that's... just thought that was hilarious. I forgot what the search term I used was. But it was... Um, I'm, oh, here, here we go. Let me give you the search term. I'll tell you exactly what it was. Rehabbing a property. That's awesome. So that I Googled awesome. rehabbing a property, and uh, old Charlie came up on, let's see here. I go to images.